Oh dear, this is making so much noise, Tom. Okay. Hi everyone, it's Tammy from Nutmeg Notebook and Tom. Hi. <laughs> so, oh, take a deep breath. Okay. Okay, it's been a wild and crazy day here. Nothing went as we had planned, so we just had to go with it. Um, but we're glad you're here. We're glad you're joining us. This is what we're making today. I can't uh, tip it too have, much. Have you said who we are? And I said, hi, I'm Tammy and this is Tom from Nutmeg Notebook. I missed all of that. Okay, so we teach people how to cook that are following a whole food plant-based lifestyle. We're also no oil, very low sodium, and we also don't use refined sugar. But our food tastes amazing and we share our recipes and all of our tips on how we've figured out how to make this lifestyle easier because we know if you don't figure out how to make it easy, you're not going to be able to sustain it for the long term. And we so believe in this lifestyle, this way of eating for our health, for the environment and to save the animals. And so we're very passionate about it and we want you to be successful like we have been. How's that? That was great. Okay, wonderful. So we're, we're going to have some healthy, tasty stuff we're going to talk yeah, about Yeah, so tonight. we're making this mango lime pudding with a raspberry sauce. I was inspired to make this recipe from a recipe that I saw in the Esselstyn's book, How to Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook. I think they call theirs Mango Madness. And of course, I had to put my own spin and twist on it. If you like this video, if you guys would give us a, a click on the like, give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. It helps our ratings on YouTube and then it encourages YouTube to suggest our channel to people who are looking for whole food plant-based recipes. So we're gonna be using the high powered Vitamix blender and I'm gonna apologize in advance for how noisy it is. I usually try to avoid using the noisy appliances when we're doing live because when we do a recorded video, Tom edits all of that out so it's not annoying. But um, I just wanted to get this recipe out to you and share it in case anyone wanted to make it for uh, the Valentine's Day that's coming up later this week, but this is absolutely delicious all year long. And I will tell you that I am using frozen organic mangoes that I bought at Costco. You know, they have that great big bag there and I just let them thaw out. And I, we, because our day was crazy, I had intended to have a blog post up for you with the recipe on it. That didn't happen because we just got home a little while ago. And so we'll I'll be try to we'll be catching up I'll with try that to get in the coming it, days. So, right. So it'll be a and we'll embed this video in, in that. that yeah. Yes. So if you want to write down what it is, this is four cups of mango, and this was like really heaping cups, not level with the the measuring cup. It was, you know, nice full cups. And so I'm just gonna put that in my blender. And all of the products that we're using, Tom is linking to those down below the video to our Amazon shop page because we have most of it on there. So four cups of mango. You can use fresh if you wish or you can use frozen and you need it to be thawed out because we're not making nice cream. We're making a very uh, soft and silky smooth pudding with this. Now I have one tablespoon of lime juice here. You can use more or less. If you don't have any fresh lime juice, you can use the kind that comes in the bottle. That's perfectly fine. If you don't have any of that instead, you could use a little bit of vanilla extract or vanilla powder. And um, also you could use like a tiny little bit of coconut extract because the, the uh, mango and the pineapple are really good together. Now I am going to go ahead and add a little bit of fresh zest using the um, lime and also my little, um, I just forgot what this was called. Microplane. Thank you. <laughs> it's a kitchen tool. I it's know a it's kitchen name. tool and you know its name, it's good. <laughs> so it works really good. You know, you just wanna make sure that you're just getting 
the green part, the colored part. You don't want to get down into the white pith because that is bitter. And I don't need a whole lot of it, but just a little because it just enhances the flavor a little bit. And it isn't going to um, completely uh, get blended up. Uh, there will be a little bit of flex that will still show when I plate it up. And I'm okay with that. If you don't want the little green flex in there, then just leave it out. I'm going to use the tamper. Oops. That little cup came right off the, the side of here. Oh, I'm going to use the, the tamper just so I can um, make sure that it's all getting down in there. And I'm going to really puree it because I, I don't want it to be chunky and I don't want it to have a lot of um, rough texture. I want it to be pretty smooth. So we're going to get started with that. Also, if you have questions, you can leave questions for us in the comment section. And if you would put, how many question marks do you like at the beginning and the end? Put four question marks at the front of your question and four at the back. So when, when we're done with Tammy's uh, presentation, she'll scroll back through and that helps her spot those. Um, if a question really pertains to what she's doing right now, I'll try to, to grab it and, and interject that into the current conversation, but that's a little hit and miss. So Yeah, so he'll be moderating the comments there, okay. you guys. So we're gonna get started. And there's, there's the, you know, that's not so bad, not, not so bad yet. No, but it's uh, gonna get worse. Yeah. Uh, some folks observed that your voice is doing better. It is right? doing better. And, um, some folks caught our interview on Chef AJ's. Oh, uh, nice. There it goes. And then we are Okay, the is noisy part. Is everybody doing okay? Did you do you know where your mute button is? Um, <laughs> it is. It's so noisy. Uh, Michelle, you haven't missed much. We are just starting this this mango lime uh, pudding, and so Tammy's just reviewed the ingredients a little bit and just blended the. Yeah, so I'll just stuff. I'll say it again because we don't have the recipe in the show notes, and I didn't get a blog post. I've actually today. been dropping the ingredients oh, good. on there as we so go. Four. This is four cups of frozen organic mango that I thawed out. You could use fresh if you wish. And one tablespoon of lime juice and a little bit of the, the fresh lime zest that I just used my microplane to get. So Lauren, and, that answers your question too. That's how far she's gotten. Okay, great. And that that is all that's in the pudding, believe it or not. And it's absolutely delicious and it just, it tastes amazing. So I made this for one of our, we teach weight loss classes. We do four weeks in a row. And this last session that we had, we had 14 people in it and I make a meal for them every week so that they get to taste, you know, what a whole food plant-based SOS free meal would be like and I made this one night for them and they absolutely loved it. Now I like to use these four ounce ramekins. I have about two dozen of these and I love to use them when we are entertaining because they make perfect little individual servings and these are four ounce ramekins. Yeah, do you have a question? Oh, um... Awesome. No, but you started with frozen, but it's not a sorbet because you're not keeping it. No, frozen. because I, 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 it was frozen, but I thawed it out because you want it to be thawed out so that you're getting a pudding type consistency. And you know, mango, it has, it's kind of thick when it's blended, and so. And no need, Lauren's asking that you don't need a pectin. No, because you know it's going to. Um, it sets up a little bit in the refrigerator. It is not going to be thick like a traditional pudding that has like cornstarch or tapioca in it. But so I'm using the term pudding loosely, I would say, um, 
because it's not going to, to you know, you're not going to stick a spoon in it and make a dent, if that makes sense, like a traditional This one, though, is, this one is still a roundy. This is a rounded top yes, in this one yes. you made earlier. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, Cause it it's does, kind of body. It does have some body to it upon sitting, especially in the refrigerator. So I will make this in advance when I'm serving it for company. And then I will put it on a tray. I'll put all my container, I'll go wow. ahead and put it in the containers. And then I will put it on a tray and I will cover the top of it like with plastic wrap, you know, cause the plastic wrap's not touching the actual product. Yeah. And then I will put it in the refrigerator and I will just let it chill until I'm ready to serve it. And then when I'm ready to serve it is when I will decorate it with the raspberry sauce. Don't let me forget to go around and zoom in when you get to the raspberry sauce. Okay, I will. And I was gonna, I'm gonna have you move the blender. Oh, can I do for that me now? Too? Yeah. Okay. And this, and you, you can lick the spoon if you wish. Oh. Now, this is a really great spatula that gets down in the um, blender carafe. And this one is also really nice if you've done something that's kind of sticky that sticks to the bottom. And this one is actually made by Vitamix and see how it's made curvy. And so it goes under the blade and then you can scrape all under the blade and get it clean. So I just wanted to show you here. I'll let you take these two, honey, because that works really great. Oh, this thing came apart. That's what happened. How weird is that? Okay. And so then you see, oh, I didn't get those quite even. I have too much in this one and not enough in that one. And so that four cups made me six nice servings. I think when I, when we had the group of 14, plus Tom and I, so that was um, 16 people that I was feeding, I used 10 cups of mango and it worked great. So I used these to make individual uh, cherry peach cobblers in. I also did that for our weight loss classes. And you know, they just look beautiful and so pretty when you go to serve them. I guess I'm gonna have to lick this one. <laughs> Had no choice. Okay, mm, it's so good. And I, I love that little boost that the lime juice gives it. It just, you know, makes it have a little bit of tang. Really great. Now, I went ahead and made the raspberry sauce because I didn't want you to have to listen to the blender twice. So what this is, is 16 ounces of frozen raspberries that I let thaw. And then once they're thawed, I do just the exact same thing that I just did with the frozen mango that I let thaw. So I put the raspberries in the blender and to that I added about three tablespoons of date paste. This is date paste. What is date paste? Date paste is taking dates, you want to pit them, so the fresh dates and pit them. I used, uh, this is actually eight ounces of dates and half a cup of warm water. And then I put it in my mini food processor and I just process it until it's really nice and creamy. And so this is what I use when I'm making things, desserts that I want to add a little bit of sweetness to, but I don't use refined sugar. So this adds a lot of sweetness, but the thing about the dates is you're retaining all of the fiber and all of the nutrients that are in the dates. And then I usually freeze this because I don't use it very often. But if you wanna make a big batch, you just remember one pound, one cup. So one pound of dates to one cup of water. But I cut that in half because I don't use it very often, but it will freeze really nicely. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll take the date paste and I'll go ahead and measure it out in tablespoons. And I'll put it in a, a Tupperware container that can go in the freezer and then I'll just freeze it. And that way I can just pop out exactly however many tablespoons that I want. So that's the date paste. You really need that with the frozen raspberries because unlike the fresh raspberries that you can get that are really sweet and delicious, 
every time I've bought the frozen raspberries, they are so tangy that you would think they were cranberries. So I do one pound of frozen raspberries that I've let thaw, put those in the blender container with two to three, maybe four tablespoons of date paste. You're going to have to taste your raspberry sauce and determine exactly how much sweetness it needs. Now for this particular recipe, I'm just using a small amount of the raspberry sauce just as um, a pretty little garnish. And so I don't need it to be really sweet because we're not eating a lot of it. Then also in the raspberry sauce, I do about a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla powder. If you don't have vanilla powder, you could use vanilla extract. Question. Uh, there's a couple of questions about where you're at right now. Um, okay. You may have answered them. Um, Michelle is asking, can you blend the dates? How did you how did you make the date paste? Yeah, I haven't tried to do that, and I was concerned about doing that. I was concerned that they wouldn't completely um, puree, but maybe they would. <coughs> mm, all this talking is making my throat go weird. Um, and because I'm using this to make a design, I wanted it to be really creamy and smooth. So you could certainly try that and see because if you blend it long enough, it does take care of the seeds in the raspberry sauce, you know, because the raspberries have a lot of small, tiny seeds. Now, the first time I'm embarrassed to tell you, but I'm going to tell you in case this happens to you. The first time I ever made oh, a raspberry. Oh, that was Michael, not Michelle. Sorry. Uh, the, <laughs> Sorry, Michael. <laughs> the first time that I made a raspberry sauce using frozen raspberries that I had let thaw out and put in the blender, I didn't blend it long enough. And I there were all these seeds. And so then I ended up straining it through a sieve and it took forever to do that. And so then the next time, then I pureed it for a longer amount of time in a high powered blender and it took care of all of the seeds as you'll see um, when I show you how to decorate that. So one pound of frozen raspberries thawed, put in the high powered blender, some date paste to taste, probably two to four tablespoons, depending on how sour it is. And then one quarter teaspoon of vanilla powder or some vanilla extract, puree it until it is nice and smooth. And then I just put it in one of these food grade squeeze bottles and I'm gonna show you how I like to decorate it so that it turns out like this, which is kind of, they look like little hearts. Okay, on, yes. on the raspberry sauce, mm -hmm. um, do you have to turn off from frozen raspberries or if you have fro uh, fresh? You know, I have never used fresh for it, but I'm sure that would probably work just fine as well. You know, the frozen ones kind of take off a certain way in the blender. They do, They because they create, because they've been frozen and then thawed, they, they make a lot of juice as they're thawing. And so I don't know if that makes a difference or not. I have never used the fresh to make the raspberry sauce, so I don't know for sure. But if someone else knows that's watching, if you would leave us a message in the comments and let us know if you've ever made the raspberry sauce with fresh raspberries. And I was able to buy organic raspberries and we weren't close to Whole Foods. We just stopped at, we have a Rayleigh's here. We stopped at a Rayleigh's, which is just a regular grocery store and they had organic frozen raspberries. Yes. Okay, on the raspberry sauce, could you not mix the date paste and the raspberry sauce initially together or you're, you're making the date paste separate and then adding it? Yeah, I You made, can't just dump the dates in with the raspberries. I don't know. I've never done, done it. it that way. I've never done it that way. I've just always used the date paste. And so, um, the but, date paste, you can have control over but, the consistency. Well, the, the, you know, if you have a blend tech or a Vitamix, it should be able to puree it, I imagine, but I can't tell you for certain because I've never done it that way. I've always used date paste to make it. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, on the raspberry sauce. Yes. That's a pretty substantial bottle of raspberry sauce. It is. So I'm going to end up. Let's talk about that a yeah, second. Yeah. Well, what you, you, what you can, you could layer it if you wanted to. So if you have a pretty glass um, 
dessert dish. You could layer, you could do mango and then you could do a layer of raspberry sauce and you could layer it and that would be beautiful. What I will probably end up doing with this is uh, putting it in, I have ice cube trays that are silicone and so I will probably fill a bunch of those uh, little ice cube trays with this and freeze it and then we'll use it when we probably when we make like banana and ice cream we have a champion juicer that we make the frozen uh, fruit desserts in and I'll probably put a bunch of this in the ice cube trays and then we can throw that through the champion when we're making other kinds of ice cream and that'll you know be really good for that <laughs> but the difficult thing about using just like eight ounces in a, the big blender is you just can't get it to puree a very small amount unless you have a small container that fits on your um, blender and so that's why I did a whole pound because a whole pound works a lot better than eight ounces Okay. So there is a reason for everything that I do. Okay. Okay. I'm going to, I'd like to show the, the we're, we're still working raspberry through stuff. stuff. Oh, okay. We're still working through stuff. Okay. Um, and thanks to Michael for, since I couldn't read his name and call him <laughs> Michelle, I did find my, my reading glasses. I did put them on. So now I can see the screen here and not Great. just blurry stuff. Um, how did you make your date paste? Yes. I answered that, but I'll tell you again. Okay. Because I came up here just recently. Sure. I use... The, the big recipe is one pound of dates to one cup of warm water. But I don't make that much because I don't use it often enough. So I do eight ounces of medjool dates. That's just the ones I prefer because they're really soft and creamy. And you take the pits out and then there's a little end on them. I didn't leave my dates out, I guess. There's a little end on them um, that you want to take off as well. It's kind of fibrous. And so I do eight ounces of dates and half a cup of hot water and I put it in my mini food processor and I just puree it until it's nice and creamy smooth. And then whatever I'm going to use it in, then it blends in really nicely and, and well. And it's especially nice if you're doing going to be sweetening something like you know, sometimes I might put it in some cobbler, in the crust on a cobbler, if I'm serving it to people who don't eat as healthy as I do. And so it just blends really nice. And I'm not going to puree that mixture. And so it's really nice to have this creamy texture that will go smooth. Um, a couple of things. Chef AJ is wondering why you didn't name it Wonderful Goddess Pudding. <laughs> Okay, AJ. <laughs> All right. And then uh, Jamie. For you, if when you come next time, that's what we'll call it for you. Okay. Um, and then I think Jamie is asking about, and maybe you touched on this, uh, the possibility of using chia seeds if you wanted it to be thicker. Yeah, you certainly could. It's going to, it'll change the texture of it, but, and I would use the white chia seeds. You know, there's the dark ones, and then there's also white ones. And so I would use the white chia seeds if I was going to do that. And you could do that if you wanted it to be more um, thick, like a traditional pudding. But but we like it just like it is. Okay. And so then, do make it this way one time just to see. Okay. And then and th there's another dialogue about these squeeze bottles. I do have a six pack of these on our Amazon page and I put a link down in the show notes of, the, of this video. Um, they're kind of handy to have around. You certainly don't need six of these for one recipe, but... But for salad dressings, dressings yeah. if you make your own ketchup, it's nice for that. If you do any different types of sauces, if you do like guacamole, if you do um, hummus and you're going to use hummus to, you know, be like a decorative topping on top of things or just to make it look prettier when you put it on top of the... A, a veggie burger or whatever. The squeeze bottles are really nice and they do come with a nice little cap so that you can put them in the refrigerator and they won't absorb the odors of things. So now are we ready to show them how to make a nice little decoration? Yeah. And just know like I, so I would put these in the refrigerator and I would chill them until it was ready, um, until I'm ready to serve them before I would decorate them when I'm serving them to company. And then the top of it will get a little more set 
and it'll be a little easier to put the um, decorative sauce on. If you do it too far in advance, then the red raspberry sauce will start to bleed into the mango and it doesn't look as good. And if you make a mistake, you can just take a spoon and scrape off the raspberry sauce and kind of smooth it over. If there's any little bit of residual of red on there, you can smooth it over. And then if you, if you keep a little bit of the mango sauce, um, the mango pudding uh, for touch-ups, then you can also put a little extra over the top where you made a boo-boo and then you can redo it. How long do these keep in the fridge once you have them made up? Um, I, we've kept them for like three days, four days, you know, if we have leftovers. Yeah, I, I don't see them lasting much longer than but three they, or four days. Yeah, with because me we in the eat house. them. Because we eat them. Yeah. Okay, so here's what I do to make the decoration. And this, uh, this one is nice yeah. and smooth, I so I'm going to show them on this. Ingredient. One more ingredient question. Yeah, I didn't, I, you know, I've been updating the, the rest of the uh, ingredient list over here. Okay, sure. And I missed how much of the vanilla powder. Uh, you're A using. quarter teaspoon. One quarter. And I'll try, in the next couple of days, I'll try to get a blog post up with everything written out for you guys. Okay. So we had intended to have that done today, but yeah. it just didn't happen. Okay, so here's what I do. Okay, let me, let me, let me move around here. So for those of you that want to check the ingredients out during the live, you'll have to refresh your page because I've been adding those ingredients and saving it as we go. So you and is that down below in the see more? In the, in the yeah. description. Not yeah. in the comments but section. They, but they should be watching this right now anyway and not going down into That's the right. comments. Okay. Yeah. okay. So you're going to tip the camera so they can yeah. see better. Yay! Okay, so there's lots of different things that you can do in different designs. So I'm just going to show you this one, and then that should get your creative juices flowing and so that you can... Let me know when you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. So I'm just going to tip this over. And, you know, sometimes there will be like a little thickness or something in it, but I'm just squirting like that one was more runny. I should have shook it. So I'm just going to do three. And then I'm going to take a toothpick and you see that first one was kind of runny. I should have shook it because it had stuff caught up in the top well, of it. You have five more chances. I know. And so I'm just going to run the toothpick. Oh, see that one didn't work through it. So let's do another one. So then we'll do a squirt, a squirt and a squirt. And I'm going to get a clean toothpick because it's important to have the toothpick clean. And then we're just going to run it through. And see how it looks like little hearts? That one wasn't perfect either. So you see, that's why I did this one. That one went great. There's something about doing things live that's just harder. I don't know what it is. The pressure, I guess. Two, three. Now those went nicer. And then we just run the toothpick through and then you get that kind of like little bleeding heart. A little more space between them. Space them a little further apart. A little apart further apart. So that you have that little tail. Well on see each I, have, I like these to be a little bit close. Okay. But you can also do like a row. Oh yeah I can't see that one. Oh you, you can't have, see that you have one? To, have to do all, front. The front one. Okay. So you can do like a row of them like that, and then just run the toothpick through. And you get that. So you guys get the idea. Oh, that middle one's a perfect little heart. It is a cute one, isn't it? And it, it just takes a little bit of practice. And then to not have an audience, then it always goes better. And I'm just gonna turn this one over. Ta-da! So there you go. And then you can do swirls too. You Sherry, can. Sherry Master saying you could do a swirl. You can. You can do swirls. You know, like sometimes I'll do something like this. It can be fun. Or you can, you know, do a zigzag. <laughs> the hearts are pretty. The hearts are prettier, okay. absolutely. Or you can do initials, you know, if it's for your kids, that's kind of fun too. To do like initials is cute because everybody likes something personalized. 
So, so there you go. But this is what, I, and I like it in the pretty little dessert dishes like this is really fun to serve it up. It just, you know, it makes it look so much special. And all this is is fruit. It's just completely fruit. But it looks elegant and pretty and festive. And there you go. It worked good for that one. And so it's just fun. And it, you know, just elevates a simple, I'm done with this part, Tom. So it just elevates a really simple little fruit dessert. So instead of just serving mango and raspberries, it just makes it feel a little more special. And then you get to eat it with a spoon. But, you know, if you're, you know, watching your weight or trying to lose weight or just trying to eat healthy, then this is a wonderful way to do it because it's not going to cause cravings. It's not going to derail your weight loss efforts or, you know, it's completely healthy and it's very pretty as well. So any other questions from anyone? Oh, uh, Michael says you should have done an AJ initials on one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I should have. I when, should have. When she comes here, we can do that. We will. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's a good idea. Yeah. So I don't know. Oh, Yo, you could make a heart. That's true. You could also just make a heart with it as well. Yeah. For a holiday. Yeah. yeah that's a good idea. Mustard so, and ketchup, Lauren. Mustard and ketchup. For to use this. Oh, those would work uh, for yeah, mustard and ketchup. Yeah, these would be great for mustard and ketchup. And if you make your own ketchup, if you make my um, dressing, the creamy balsamic dressing is really super popular with people. And you can make that and put it in the bottle. And then you can, like, we like it to, to use it when we make our, um, the little egg rolls that we make in the air fryer without any oil. We like it on our spring rolls. Mm -hmm. So it's just nice to be able to squirt that out yeah. as well. Uh, Brenda, uh, a while back here, was asking about the white versus the black chia seeds in terms of nutritional value between I, the I two. I'm not I aware of it. I don't know. I can't answer that. It'd have to look on the back of the packages of them and see. I don't know if there's any difference in nutrition or not because of the difference in the color. But it could be. Yeah. Kay Pillow says, hello. Hello, Kay. Um, peach Melba. Raspberry sauce and peaches over ice cream, Laura Fish says. Mm, that sounds good. Um, oh, and yeah, yes, thank you, Jesse. I did, uh, before all of the different utensils and stuff, it's all uh, linked in the um, show notes below. And they're all items that we routinely have on our Amazon influencer uh, shopping page mm -hmm. anyway, and that link to the total page is down there in the show notes as well. Um, okay. I'm scanning for any further questions and I'm not coming up with any. So at this time we can throw it open to any general questions you have yeah. before, and we'll work on the home stretch here. Absolutely. Um, um, we talked to Michael about what thickens it already. That was earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the dishes that Tammy makes are just really such simple and pure ingredients where we're not complicating things or adding a, a bunch of stuff. And I just am always blown away at how, how awesome yummy they are. such simple things can taste. Yeah, so, absolutely. <coughs> mm. You know, the nice cream coming out of that champion machine is one of the most amazing Best. things, just bananas, just cherries, just mango, just grapes. We learned that from Chef AJ at her house. Yeah. And it's the best. And, and it's just frozen neat. fruit ice cream ever. Yeah. You would think that it had all kinds of, you know, added things, but it, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't. Yeah. Just so. fresh, natural ingredients yeah. are just totally amazing yeah. and fun. Yeah. Kathy is here from Australia. Wow. Barbara, you're going to have to probably go back and watch the replay. We just finished about a half hour of food demonstration. So, yeah, um, we made the mango yeah. lime pudding with the raspberry sauce, yeah. which is really fun. Okay. So, uh, do. so, if there's any other questions, if there's not any other questions, we're probably going to go ahead and wrap up. We are. And, and dessert's ready. So, now we need to sort out what we're having dinner. For dinner. I ate my chopped salad for lunch. So, we now did. I'm going to have had to chops. make steamed vegetables for dinner with some rice in them. Hmm. I don't know what I'm going to have yet. So Maybe some soup. Soup sounds good. 
Okay. All right. Well. That's I good. Hey, they've asked, some people have asked for a short video, and this one is short, 36 minutes. So Goose Joe says, we love your banana quinoa oat muffins. My latest variation adds finely chopped apple and apple pie spice. That sounds delicious. So if you guys haven't tried my quinoa banana oat muffins, go to the blog and look for that. I think we also have mm. a video showing it. And then there's about five different desserts that you can make with that one mix. And I take that mix and when I make it, I will make like four to six of the dry ingredients mixes so that the next time I want to make them, I don't have to drag out all the ingredients. So that's another one of my batch prepping, time saving uh, recipes and lots of great things that you can make with those. So Mary Jo says she loved seeing us on the weight loss summit. So she's talking about Chef AJ and Toby's The Truth About Weight Loss Summit that's going on. And you can, it's not too late to register for that. It's free. So if you register for that, if you look on our Facebook page, um, or we also have a YouTube video about it, you can get the link, or Tom can put the link in the show notes as well. And the we were on yesterday, so it's too late to see that video now, but they'll end up doing a replay of it. But uh, you, can, you can still catch today's uh, interviews. They will be replayed and you can- Until 10 tomorrow Until morning. 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So just incredible people that she's interviewing, doctors and dietitians and experts in the field of weight loss that are sharing their expertise about the truth about what we need to do in order to lose weight. Now they're so, talking about being wah. <laughs> oh, and bean ma. So bean ma is a recipe that we just um, put up it was last, last week's week, live. Last week's live. We're so getting, last Tuesday, we're getting pictures from all over the country uh, with different pictures of people's uh, results with bean ma and what they're putting it on. Mm -hmm. So it's it's, it's been a, a lot of fun. Super uh, quick and easy, fun recipe to do in your pressure cooker. So check that out. Yeah, if you missed last week's, go back. Yeah, go back and watch that because it's really delicious. And people are loving it. They how, are. They're loving how simple it is, how easy it is, and mm -hmm. how tasty it is, and how many different ways that they can serve it. And, the, and they're yeah. posting pictures on yeah. Nutmeg Notebook Facebook page. So also we have the blog if you haven't visited the blog yet. Nutmegnotebook.com, go there. Because we have hundreds of recipes that we've never made videos for yet. We have a lot of catching yeah. up to do. Um, to go back and yeah, do and that. If you, if you don't know what Beanwa is, then go to the blog and, and read the, the the entry there and watch the video, and then you'll know all about Beanwa. Yep. Then you'll discover why we why it's named Beanwa and yeah. who named it Beanwa. Okay. So that's great. Okay. Well, that looks like that's about it for us today. Yeah. Thank you to everyone who joined us. We appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet please subscribe and then next to the subscribe you need to click on the bell icon because when you do that then every time we go live or Tom posts a new video for us you'll get a notification that we have done that. If you give us a thumbs up and like it that helps our ratings on YouTube so we really appreciate that because that allows us to reach more people. Um, oh, and if you haven't subscribed to the blog, Nutmeg Notebook, when you subscribe, you get two exclusive recipes that are just for subscribers. So you go on the blog, there's a little box to put in your email address. It's a free subscription. Then every time we post something new, you will get an email letting you know we have a new post up. It, they're usually recipes and you will, in order to get the free recipes, they're going to come to your email, but you need to check your junk email folder because oftentimes that's where they end up. Mm -hmm. They do. So anything else? No, I think we're done. People are, are saying um, um, adios and thank you. So okay, thank, thank you, you everyone. for watching. And will we do a video next week? We're getting ready. Most to... likely there will not be a video next week. If we do, it'll be short. That's that yeah so that yeah. our schedule may not permit for that we'll decide on tuesday and we'll post if yeah. we're going to and or then not we'll be on surfacing Facebook. on youtube here and there um, mm -hmm. um from different parts in the days after that yeah sounds so. good so i'm tammy and i'm tom and we help you get, get healthy, healthy and, and stay healthy, healthy 
one meal at, at a time. time. Thanks for joining Bye -bye. us today, you guys. We'll see you next time. Now we have a lot of pudding to eat. We do. <laughs> <laughs>